We are back with On the Road of Recovery with Amanda from Xenia. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Fantastic, thanks so much for coming out and joining us. Uh, getting started, can you describe your childhood for us? Um, I, I feel like I had a pretty typical childhood. Um, I was an only child, um, single mom. Uh, she worked a lot. She was very young when she had me and uh, later on she got remarried. So then we had, you know, blended family. And um, at one point um, there was some abuse and, and stuff that um, came into that. Mm -hmm. uh, That's pretty traumatizing. Uh, at, at what point did you start experimenting with drugs or alcohol? Um, around 12, I was, I was overweight. Um, I never felt like I fit in with, um, my kids that were my age. Um, so I always, I started hanging out with, um, people older than me. And so like, that was my, how do I fit in? Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I've always had issues with like anxiety and depression and stuff. So when I would drink or smoke weed, um, kind of it lessened that okay. somewhat so I could um, be not as anxious. Gotcha. And did you start experiencing any consequences at that point in time? Um, so because of um, because of drinking um, and using um, like marijuana, I didn't do any um, hard drugs at that time. Um, but I did uh, get myself into some situations. I didn't have any um, criminal consequences, um, but I did experience some traumas. Um, I uh, was raped a couple times as a teenager um, and just kind of in, put myself in bad places and around people that weren't really um, trustworthy people. Gotcha. And were you offered any support or help? Did you talk to anybody about no. those traumas? No, I okay. never, um, it wasn't until I was an adult that I actually talked about things that had happened. Gotcha. And did you, did you, how did your disease then progress? Um, so when, um, when those things started happening and I, I will say, um, like part of not fitting in and stuff. Um, I said I was, my mom was single mom, so my dad wasn't around. Um, part of my disease was also addiction to relationships and men. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's probably where it very, like really started. Um, and, uh, it went from there into harder drugs. Um, I don't, I don't really think there's anything that I didn't try at some point. Um, I, uh, I have two kids of my own mm -hmm. and, um, I always thought I was going to be a good mom and I was going to do things differently, but, um, that, that was not my story before. Um, I drugs and alcohol and everything else came first and that, um, ruled my life gotcha. for, from the time I was from 12 until, um, so I've been, uh, substance free for going on seven years. So congratulations. That's spectacular. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about how your relationships were impacted, um, with your use? Um, so my relationships were, um, surface relationships. It was always about, um, what I could do for other people or what they could do for me. Um, there were never any meaningful or, um, truly intimate and not intimate in like a sexual way, but just like true friendships, true relationships. Um, because, um, my use and, and my, um, thought patterns and stuff. They didn't, didn't allow for that. There was no time for that. It was all about how and when can I get high and, and numb myself from everything else that was going on. Uh, at any point in time prior to, you know, this being getting sober, um, had you re had, had you tried to go into treatment 
have you re did you reach out for help for yourself at all? Um, not really. I don't think I, um, I don't think I realized I was an addict, um, for a really long time. Um, I knew like, so I, I know I had a drug of choice, but, mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I would get a consequence from, um, a particular drug, like I could stop using that, but I would go on to something different. Okay. Um, so it never really clicked in my head mm -hmm. that, um, I was an addict. It was just that drug was a problem. Um, so I never, um, I never really, I never reached out for help. I never, um, I never went to treatment or anything like that. I tried um, a couple of times, uh, geographical change will cure everything, mm -hmm. um, but it did not. Um, my recovery journey started with um, somebody that I was close with, um, that I used with regularly. Uh, they got into some legal trouble and it scared me because okay. I had never been in jail. I had never been in trouble. Um, it, I think some people think I'm crazy when I say it, but it was like, God spoke to me and was like, you have two paths in front of you. Mm -hmm. And which one are you going to take? Because if you choose this one, you might as well call somebody to come get your kids. Uh, Cause you know where it's going to end. Mm -hmm. Or you can pull your head out of your ass, get your stuff together, be the mom your kids deserve and do the right thing. And um, at that point it was like, um, yeah, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to do that. I was at the lowest point ever in my life. Um, I was praying to a God that I wasn't sure even existed to just let me die. Um, there was nothing um, that I could find joy in. Um, mm -hmm. Not my kids, not my life, not there. There was nothing that um, there was just emptiness and sadness and depression. And I've, and I've struggled with, you know, depression and anxiety and mental health. And it was just, a really low point and um, that was that was my starting point of I got to do something different um, so what did you do so I um, I changed everything um, I quit going around the people that I had used with anybody that I had ever um, used with or lived that way with. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped going around and I stopped talking to them. I um, involved myself um, with the church. I got involved with a nonprofit organization. During that time, um, I met, I met a lot of people, but um, I met somebody um, who was, a, he was coming in and volunteering and um, we really just had a lot in common. He was also in recovery. Um, we started dating and that progressed. And uh, the, so my real, um, like, a major point in my life and in my recovery was um, he relapsed um, and he overdosed and died in our bedroom. Oh, oh my. And uh, my son and I found him. And um, the faith that I had learned, um, the faith in the relationship that I had started to build um, with my higher power um, got me through. And uh, again, it was like God spoke to me and uh, he said like, I have a purpose for you. There's, I have a job I need you to do, but you have to walk through this. And, uh, like I could use all those things that I had been through, the abuse, the rape, um, the, all the different traumas, um, his passing, um, all of that. And like, I could use those things to make a difference mm -hmm. and to help other people. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was like, I feel like, um, even though I haven't gotten high in almost seven years, like that's really when I 
feel like my recovery really started because I finally, um, I started going to meetings, I started going to recovery events, and I finally realized, like, yeah, I, I am an addict. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. an addict. That's what's wrong. Yeah. I am what's wrong. Um, my thinking is what is wrong. Um, and, uh, like, I wanted to make all of those things that had happened count for something. Um, and I also felt like um, all of those things didn't happen to me for no reason. Like, I, they were supposed to happen because I was supposed to use them. Those were tools. Um, so I, uh, I uh, ended up going and working for another nonprofit organization, but this organization was an organization um, specifically to help women in recovery. Um, women could come into there, um, they could detox in there, they could live there, they could um, go through program, get treatment, get help, learn how to live. Um, and our very first um, client had been through a very similar situation um, with somebody that she loved, um, also dying from an overdose. And um, But when it happened with her, um, her addiction, her disease um, spiraled out. And uh, I sat and just talked with her and uh, like I finally like clicked of this, this is why, this is um, why I had to go through that. And um, we just, we spent a lot of time together. We talked and we shared stuff and like she, she helped me just as much as I helped her. I have, None of the things I went through have to be in vain. Right. And Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about how your relationship with your children changed once you got into recovery and made those changes yourself? So um, my oldest son, um, he probably went through the most with my addiction, with my active use. Um, and he definitely uh, remembers more of it um, with my mental health and my substance use. Um, I really, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't at all what he needed and I wasn't able to care for him in the way he needed or be the mom that he needed. Um, he didn't live with me for several years. Um, and uh, today, he tells me I'm his person. My kids are gonna do amazing things and they had to go through hard stuff though to mm -hmm. get through that or to get to that point. Um, today, me and my kids go and do things together for fun. Um, me and my oldest, um, we like to go out to eat a lot. We do that a lot. We just, we talk, um, we talk. We. He's 19, so today I kind of get to be his friend sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I also get to be somebody he can count on, and he couldn't before. Um, my youngest son, I get to uh, go do things with him. I get to um, introduce him to new things that are healthy, like we go play paintball. Oh, how fun! <laughs> yes, yeah. it's great. Um, yes, we get to do. Um, say my focus gets to be on how I can be a better mom. So part of the healing process is forgiveness. How did you work through that and how, what, what did you do to be able to forgive other people, forgive yourself? What, can you talk a little bit about that? So um, still a work in progress, but one of the tools of getting to that, um, like I said I work, a, I work a 12 step program. Um, I, I have a sponsor um, I talk with her and work with her regularly. I work, I do step work. Um, I write about the stuff that is heavy on my heart. And just because I, I accept something one day does not mean that tomorrow it's not going to be heavy on my heart and I'm not going to take it back for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but today I have tools. I have um, a recovery family, I have a sponsor, I have meetings, um, and I've learned how to use those things to, um, to work through. Um, struggles because uh, life on this side is definitely much better and I would take um, this life over the 
how it was before any day, but it doesn't mean it's always easy. There's a lot of hard days and hard things, and um, but it's all worth it. And, uh, and today I have tools to get through it. I don't ever have to get high ever again. Absolutely. You mentioned earlier that you've struggled with um, depression and anxiety, which is, uh, you know, difficult to manage. So how do you, um, how, how, what, do, what do you do to be able to deal with both your depression and anxiety? So um, do I struggle with depression and anxiety? I also struggle with uh, social anxiety. Um, I struggle with um, public speaking. Struggle with telling people about um, my my story. Um, I pushed myself to uh, speak um, in meetings and share um, and share things that I was struggling with. I also um, and I and I still struggle with that now. Um, I still struggle walking into a meeting and sharing and talking, um, but I push myself to do it. And when I'm um, when I'm really struggling, like I have my core people that I call and I talk to and I um, get to be reminded I'm not the only one and I'm not alone and that um, my people, uh, my tribe loves me no matter what I'm going through, no matter uh, how ugly my day is. Um, I can, today I can step back um, and I can see um, that I have things to offer, good things to offer, that I, I bring something good to the table today. I'm still a work in progress. Um, I still have to work on it every day. I still have to decide every day. Um, today I'm going to do something um, good. I'm going to be a uh, healthy person today. Um, I'm going to work on myself today. And uh, sometimes I fail. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I am a train wreck. Um, but I get to try again the next day because I'm not going to get high over it. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Well, your story is amazing. I would like to see, you know, if there's somebody out there that is struggling and they're, um, you know, really, there's, they're, they're really having a hard time. Are there any words of hope that you could share with somebody? Um, for a really long time, I was hopeless and thought there was no other way to live. Um, there was no other way to be. This was my, that was my destiny. And uh, I was always just going to be that person. And uh, it's not true. That's a lie. Um, that's your disease. And there is help and there is another way. And uh, all of this is possible. Uh, the gifts that recovery um, give us are amazing. Um, reach out and, and call somebody because there's so many people um, that will help and uh, you're worth it. Is there anything that we missed that you would, would like to share? Uh, no, I think we covered it all. I can't think of anything. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Well, we really appreciate you coming out today. Uh, your story is definitely going to help somebody who, who needs to hear it. And it, you are a beautiful example that recovery is possible and that there is, is a way out of active addiction. So thank you so much. Thank you.